Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is video number 22 in our IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to take a look at the rest of the SD card functions, and then we'll circle back and we will look at the file and folder management functions for the voice recording function, since those are also SD card related. Let's get started. Let's finish going through the rest of the SD card settings and functions. Even though 20 meters is pretty active tonight and it might be more fun to play radio, but we should probably take a look at the rest of the SD card stuff. If you remember from when we started doing the recording functions, we went into the SD card menu from the menu button and then set and I've got it already on there. It's on the second page of these menus on the set screen. So we'll go into SD card. And the first two items you have is load setting and save setting. We're going to do save setting first. This saves your memory settings, memories that you've got saved, uh, all of the various options that you can set with the set menus um, that are on this the screen before this one, uh, and basically any of the settings that you have for the radio are saved in a settings file. Now I've got a couple that you can see are already saved here. We'll create a new one now, and you just hit new file, and the default name for the file is set with the year, month, date, and then just a serial number that increments. So if I go back, you see I've already got a 1. I have another one here that I gave a different name to. So I'm going to just accept the default name here and press enter. Save file. Yes. And then if you go into load setting, you can pick a file that you just saved or any file that you previously saved. And then load the settings back in. Now here you have two options. One is all, which will load all of the settings. Or you can select and you can reload the uh, cat control address for the radio, the reference adjustment for the oscillator, and then other settings and memory. So you don't normally restore the address for the radio and the reference adjustment because if you were copying, say, memories from somebody else's radio, they might not want you changing the reference adjustment. This is the oscillator reference adjustment. So the default is to have those unchecked. You can, of course, check them. Uh, and then you press load. And then it asks you if you want to really load it. And now we've reloaded it. So it asks you to restart the 7300. And you'll notice nothing works now. So I have to power it off and then power it back on and it just reloaded all the settings. So of course what you would use this function for primarily is if you have different groups of memories that you want to save or if you just want to back up all the settings so in case something happens where you have to reset the radio you can save that to a file. Um, you could also have files for a contest Oh, and let me show you that. Um, so let me do another save setting with a new file. This is the default name, but you notice you have the full keyboard here, and now it's giving it a serial number of 3. You can go and I just cleared the last few characters, but you can make the file name pretty much um, anything that you want. So we'll call it uh, settings... Um, space contest. Maybe this is particular. Oh, I guess that's as long as I can make it. Um, so we'll just make it TST and then enter. Then it says, do I want to save it? And then it's completed. And then if I look at the load settings, of course, there's my new name. So you might have settings for a contest and so on. That's pretty much it for load and save settings. Pretty straightforward. 
Then there's one more option for them for saving and loading settings called Save Form. And it really is an abbreviation for format. And the default is Now Version, which is the current firmware version in the radio. So when you save the settings, it saves them in the format that the current firmware version uses. There are two previous firmware versions, at least as of the time I'm recording this. If they were to come out with another new firmware version, there could be more options here. And you can say, I want to save it in the old format for a radio that only has this firmware version in it. So if you knew somebody that had a radio that hadn't been updated, you could save in that format. Or if you had a second 7300 somewhere else that hadn't been updated, you could save it in that format. Now, that's kind of a handy function, but I'm going to suggest that, honestly, if you have an older radio or you have a friend that has an older radio that hasn't been updated, that you probably want to just update it to the latest firmware and always use the latest firmware. And if you have a friend that hasn't done it and they don't know how to do it, maybe you can help them do it. Um, and I will be having a video on how to do that a little further down the road here. So... Those are the three options for saving settings and reloading them. SD card info, we looked at this when we were doing the recording. This just tells you how much space is on there and how much recording time that gives you. So the next one's down, and I'm going to work from the bottom up here. Unmount. In the manual, they tell you that you should always unmount a card before you unplug it, if you're going to do it with the radio on. If you power the radio off, then you can remove the card. Um, but if you're going to leave the radio on, press unmount, and it's asking you if you want to do it for sure. Yes. Now it's unmounted the card, so it's written any buffers out to it, and it's stopped any recording or anything else that's going on. It's not writing to the card. So now I can remove the card. And I'm going to just put it right back in. Now, to be perfectly honest, I never use the unmount feature. As long as you know you're not recording and you're not in the middle of saving something and there is no activity going on on the card, you're pretty safe in removing it. You can corrupt an SD card if you remove it while data is being written to it. But your chances of that are pretty low, to be perfectly honest. Next one up here is format. We already went through that. I'm going to say no, I don't want to format this. Firmware update, and again, I'll show you what the menu comes up with. It gives you this very uh, bright warning message um, telling you that you can basically brick your radio if you don't do this right. I'm going to say no because I don't have a firmware update. Um, I did update this radio when I first got it, and it's pretty straightforward to do. They, the instructions are pretty clear, and it's pretty automated. And then the last thing for the SD card is screen capture view. And let me show you how to set up for screen capture, and then we'll show you what this screen does. So I'm going to get out of the SD card options, and if we go into Menu, Set, um, function, and somewhere on these pages, I will find it. There is an option for the power button, and here we go, screen capture, power switch. So the options are on and off. If you have this on, what it does is if you briefly press the power button, it will take a screenshot of whatever's on the screen. So, for example, I can take a screenshot of this screen, and then the other option you have is the format, BMP or PNG, which is just the graphics file format. So that can be handy, like if you're recording videos like this, you can show the screen um, more easily that way, or if you want to capture maybe something that, you know, you saw lots of activity on the band and you can capture that. So let's go back into the card menu. And if we go to the screen capture view, you'll see there's a few more files here. So there's the one that had the screen capture. 
and I could just exit out of that, and then there's the one that I did of the radio. So it's a kind of a handy function, probably not something most people will use very often, but if you want to capture the screen for any reason, you can take a look at it there. And of course, you can take the card out and use this on your computer, which will be the much more... Um, the much more useful way to use that function. That's pretty much it for the SD card functions. Now let's pick up on the one part that I didn't show on the recordings and that is in the recorder the playback and file management functions. So you can go to the setting here that says play files and then I have files from different dates. I have one from today and one from earlier, or two from earlier. And then if you go into the folder, I have a couple of recordings here. This was recording some RIDI. I have some from the other day recording some lower sideband. And then, as you know, if we touch that, it will play the file back. But if I touch and hold any of the files, then I have the option to delete or delete all. Delete all would delete all the files in this folder. Delete will just deal delete the current file that we're working with. And then file information, and this again just gives me a little bit more information. It gives you the S meter reading here, which it doesn't show you in the, uh, in the file information on the play screen. The rest of it is the same as what you see with the other information, frequency mode and date and time. So that's pretty much it for the files. Again, you can delete them from here. As I mentioned in the previous video, I just do it on my laptop. And then you can do the same thing with folders. If you touch and hold a folder, I can get the folder information, it says there's one file, and it tells me the name of the folder and when it was created. And I can also delete the folder, or I can delete all folders. So this is just file management for deleting files and so forth. Um, but you can do it all from the radio if you don't have a computer handy and you need to free up some space. Um, or you can stick the card in your computer and do all these same things with Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. And that's it for that function. That covers Section 8 of the manual and finishes up a little bit in Section 6. Next time we're going to be jumping around to a few places in the manual as we cover connecting your 7300 to your PC using the USB connection. If you're enjoying these videos and you find them useful, you can subscribe by clicking on the little pop-up button that'll appear at the end of the video in the lower right corner of the screen. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.